Color grading is a topic that is so crucial to your video that a lot of creators like to keep it to themselves, really protect their process. But because it is one of my most asked questions, today we are going to help transform your color grading abilities and we're gonna do it in under five minutes. Under five minutes or your money back guarantee. Color grading in Premiere Pro can actually be insanely fast and easy and you can turn out a good result in very little time. Today we're gonna to go over some classic cinematic color grading. We'll do a Instax Polaroid look. We can do like a Fujifilm retro look, the orange and teal, and because drone cameras have come such a long way in terms of quality, debatably competing with DSLRs at this point, we will grade a shot from my DJI drone. As a bonus for watching all the way to the end, and because I love you so much, I'm gonna teach you how to create LUTs, how to import LUTs so that you can use them over and over forever. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you some of my own LUTs that we make today for free. So here we are in Premiere Pro with a basic shot. What you really need is a handsome model for your shots if you want them to look good. You know, if you don't have one of those, make sure you DM me for rates. We're just gonna go through a basic color grading. As you can see, I am in the color workspace. If you don't see these workspaces here, you just have to go up to window workspaces and click on the one. The first thing I do in any color grade is go to my curves tab. This is a very powerful lighting tool. Right here is your whites, right here is your blacks. We'll set a center point, and now we've isolated our highlights and our shadows. All of our basic corrections are now right here on a single line. I like to lift my midtones because it creates a greater dynamic range. And then we pull it down into an S curve just to get some contrast. What we're gonna do is we're gonna saturate this so that we can get an idea of what colors we're working with in the scene. And then we can make more minor tweaks here. I'm just gonna adjust my white balance to offset this pink that is bouncing off my face. Then we're gonna go back to curves bit more contrast, some more saturation. So after we fix up the lighting of our scene, I like to move into the colors next. Thanks to the 2019 updates of Premiere Pro, we have a ton of power in our curves tab for coloring individual colors. We need to remember that with great power comes great responsibility. This is an alternative to your basic color wheels. I like to think of these as like our Lightroom slider adjustments. It's pretty brilliant because we have our eyedropper tool right here. We can go and we can pick a color that we are having an issue with. It will select that exact color. We wanna be really cautious with what we're doing here. As much as it's like using the Adobe Lightroom sliders, we gotta remember that the lighting can change throughout a scene, which means the colors can change throughout a scene. And what looks good right now at this very second might not look so good in three or four seconds. So when it comes to video, I try to make the adjustments a little bit smaller than what I would on a photo, because we don't want to accidentally desaturate somebody's eye color, skin color, or mess up their hair. Don't mess up their hair. So here we have our hue versus our saturation. So if we want to get rid of this pink, we can completely desaturate it, but that might look unnatural. What we can do is come down to our hue and hue, and we're just gonna make it a little bit more orange. And then we're just gonna slightly adjust the rest of the pink and then the reds. Just to kind of centralize this color, we can go back to our white balance. And now we finally got one single color. If we wanna do something like isolate a single color like this teal shirt I got on, we can make it super saturated or we can make it gray. But what you wanna notice is that, you know, it's not 100% accurate. So we don't wanna make dramatic changes like this because it could cause a lot of issues. And there you go, there's a basic color grade with our curves. Now, one little secret that I will let you in on. If you look at my timeline, you can see that these are all the exact same clip. This is all one take that we did and we cut it up to make it one solid flow. Now, if you are working with the same clip over and over and over, instead of going to your Lumetri color, copying and pasting it on everything, here, we'll just delete what we did. What you really wanna do is go into this right here the master. So this is going to affect the entire clip. So any adjustments you make here are now gonna be applied literally everywhere across the board. And I mean, that's very important for these sorts of situations. Our adjustments do not show up when we click on it again, and we are back into this specific clip. But when we click on our master, it's right there. It was that easy. If you're kind of stuck in your color grading, and you don't even know really where to start, what I typically do is go over to our creative tab 
and I go through the preset looks. Adobe Premiere has a ton of looks already built into it, and this can really just start your color grading experience. If we want to go with like SL Big, you know, we can go in here. If you want to go for a really sunset vibe, we can go with Gold Heat right here. Maybe you want to adjust it, bring up the shadows, bring down the highlights a bit. It's a bit bright here. Let's go to our curves tab. Do our S curve to create that contrast. Maybe we need a bit more saturation here. We could make it a bit more pink to feel like a sunset. Or maybe we want to go complete silhouette. We can completely bring down these shadows from this to this. And all we did was go to our creative tab and just pick a random look that was already in Premiere Pro. Definitely take advantage of this tab if you're not really sure where to start or if you want some ideas of a type of look that you want to go with. Now that we have the basics down to color grading, we have free range to adjust these and you know, put some sort of creative twist on whatever color grade we want. I know you are watching this video to check out some specific looks, so let's go do those right now. As you can see, we have a few clips here. These were shot on the Sony a7 III. I tried it out on my recent trip to Guam with my friends Sam, Bryn, Ben, and Jordan. And of course, we have a drone shot from my Mavic 2 Zoom. Overall, I just can't believe the improvements to these technologies and their color grading system. What we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly learn how to do all of these color grades. We have this Polaroid look right here, our classic film look, the infamous orange and teal, and as promised, I colored a drone shot in low light for you. So the reason why I have these on adjustment layers are just so I can do a before and after for you. I'm going to go in and I'm just going to delete the Lumetri color and we're going to do it from scratch. Awesome. So Polaroid look. This look is inspired by, you know, the retro cameras that don't have a great dynamic range or range of color by any means, but it creates a nostalgic look for us and still has a modern twist to it. As usual, we're gonna start in the curves category. We're gonna plant our center key. The biggest thing for the Polaroid effect is the lifted blacks that we saw. So what we wanna do is take our black level right here and lift it. I know it looks kind of weird right now, but we're gonna bring it back in to create this cool contrast and we already have a really cool look to it. This curves tool right here is magic, I'm telling you. So next what we wanna do is go to our basic correction. You can lift the shadows a little bit, maybe push up the whites and drop the highlights. What we really wanna do is just show that there's not a huge amount of dynamic range, but we wanna create contrast while having lifted blacks, which is kinda of contradictory. So from here, that looks really clean. We're just gonna throw on a vignette real quick. Pretty intense. Um, we're gonna feather it out. The point is on every Polaroid is that the edges are completely vignetted. So it's a real key to this look. Next, we're gonna go into our creative. They have a faded film slider right here, which is like pretty sweet. It just lifts the black channel overall for your look and it's super helpful for this. What I tend to notice from Polaroids is they're not oversaturated, so we're just gonna bring the saturation down, but then we're gonna bring up the vibrance, which brings up the individually muted colors and gives us kind of a palette right there. Cool. Next thing we're gonna do is just go back to our curves and we're just gonna tweak up these colors. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the range and kind of make it into a single color. So. What I'm trying to say is all of these greens should be one teal. So what we're doing is we're just trying to create a single look from this. So now we have this beautiful teal, a little before and after, it's all one color now. And what we're gonna do is just clean up our skin tones a little bit here. And then I'm not a massive fan of yellows. I don't think they're usually captured very well. So we're just gonna desaturate those a bit. And I feel like this could use a bit more pop to it. Awesome. And there we go, our Polaroid look. Now that that is out of the way, let's get into a film look. The film look is interesting because it's essentially taking cameras from the beginning of time and then trying to modernize it without losing too much of its identity. 
what we want to do here is just really focus on the shadows, the vignette, and the coloring. So we're gonna create our S curve and create that contrast right there. This look honestly doesn't take too much to it. Now what you notice in film is there's not a ton of skin tone. So we're just gonna desaturate the skin tones a little bit. Everybody kind of looks pale in film. But what we can do is we can make things like this pop and give it a modern twist. And then we're just gonna make the water feel like one sort of color and desaturate it a bit. We can come up here and bring down the highlights a bit and the black level just to add to the intensity. And then we're gonna go back to our creative tab, use our cop out faded film look a bit, bring down the saturation, up the vibrance of those few colors. And then again, vignette. And this one's kind of up to you in terms of how much vignette you really wanna put on it. I'm gonna be a little over dramatic just so that you can get the rough idea. Awesome, and then the key essential to this is just adding one more adjustment layer. And then we're gonna create some noise like we did in the VHS video. We put that on a separate adjustment layer because it takes so much power just to render that alone. And anywhere from around 10 to 20% looks really good here. So let's just go with the 15 and then we'll render that out. And there we go. The classic film look. The noise is a little intense on this one. I would honestly bring it down to 10%, but overall you get the idea. So obviously there are a lot of different types of film looks. If you watch my VHS effect video, you know we could use some more overlays on here if we want to create different noise and make it a little bit more customizable. But I'm really happy with this. I feel like this is a nice modern twist on what a film look would look like. I know you've seen this one before a million times, but an orange and teal never ceases to look good. We want to be careful with this adjustment because we don't want to make our subject look like an orange. You know, that would be ridiculous to have like a really fake tan and look super orange. <laughs> the first thing we want to do here, we're going to do our curves real quick, create that dynamic range. But then what we want to do is saturate this one just so we can kind of get an idea of what the color balance is like to begin with. As we can see, it's a little bit pink and blue. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag up the orange. And as you can see, the skin tones are still really pink. I don't know if that was from the sun. But we'll bring that down to be more green. Cool. Just out of personal preference here. A little bit more contrast. And now what we wanna do is adjust these colors individually. So in the orange and teal, again, we wanna centralize our blues. So we're gonna take our dropper, come over to our greens, and make them a little more blue. Now, what I notice is they look a bit unnatural when you make them blue, so we're just gonna desaturate them a bit. Another color that just doesn't work out very well on this is yellow. So let's just eliminate the yellow. And then finally, we're just gonna adjust his skin tones. There we go. Take away the red. And now we're making our reds a bit more orange instead of looking like a burn. What we like to do is just go over to our creative tab to add a teal shadow and then make our highlights more orange. So now it kind of just splits the image into two different colors. You can adjust it a little bit more depending on your preferences. I'm going to create a little more contrast in here. But for the most part, that's it. Let's render this out real quick. So I might go back and I might just desaturate these a little more. They're driving me a bit insane. So there's a rough idea of the orange and teal look. I've been really impressed with the color grading that's coming off of my DJI shots. What you want to remember is that your drone footage should still match what the rest of your footage looks like. So if you're going with an orange and teal look, you still want to make sure the drone matches that. Or if you're going with the film look, you're going to want to make sure the drone matches the film look. For the most part, there are a lot of similarities between drone shots in terms of the color depth, the contrast, and just the overall look. Now finally, what I wanted to do was show off the low light capabilities of this drone. I was absolutely blown away when I color graded this shot the first time. And I'm just going to show you how to do it in like 10 seconds. Let's create this dramatic scene that we have over here on the drone. So dramatic scenes are typically pretty dark. What we want to do is go to our curves tab and just really bring down the shadows and blacks. Awesome. We'll give it a little more contrast here. We can see a little bit of highlight peaking here. So we're just going to bring that down. And then just the whites overall. Let's check out the color we have on this clip. 
so as you can see it's very yellow and I mean it didn't look yellow at all when we actually recorded it I'm not sure how that got picked up so let's just simply adjust it real quick give a little more highlight to the whole cloud by adjusting the overall white balance and there we go our dramatic drone scene and that's it for our looks there are thousands of LUTs floating around the internet, but everybody has different settings on their camera. So I'm just gonna quickly show you how to create your own so that you can just keep reusing them with your own picture profiles. I promised you that I would show you how to export your LUTs. All you have to do is click on the Lumetri, and we're just gonna go right here, these three bars up here, and then we export the cube. So we can name this whatever we want. I like to make sure mine all have the same title so I know that they're my LUTs. And then I put them into brackets so that they show up first when we import them. I'll show you that in a second. So here we go. Here's our Polaroid. We're going to save it to our assets. Hit save. Now we've located our Polaroid color grade. What we want to do is open up our applications in a new tab. And we're just going to go to Adobe Premiere and hit show contents. Now that we're in here, we go down to Lumetri, our LUTs. Here we have our different categories. So the technical ones, these are your input LUTs. These are made for very specific cameras. These are not made for looks. What we want to do is go to the creative tab. And we're just going to drag our Polaroid over into our creative tab. Hit authenticate, type in our password, and now it is, where'd you go? There it is, right there. Now, after we restart the program, it should appear right in here. The reason why I put it into creative is so that you can get a nice preview of the LUT before you actually apply it. These are some of my favorites right now. Look at that. And there you go. That's how you use your LUTs. If you're gonna be using LUTs, you know, typically you don't use it at 100%. I like to use mine between like 50 to 70%. You can stack LUTs and you can stack adjustment layers, but remember, whatever is the top layer is gonna adjust everything below it. So now you have a rough idea on how to color grade effectively. There's still so much to learn about color grading, but I want to at least give you a quick run through. Now I promised you free LUTs. All you have to do is click the link in the description and submit your email below if you wanna get new updates like my upgraded personal LUTs, newsletters, tips and tricks on how to do better and information on trainings. And you will get all of the LUTs that we made today for free. If you'd like a more in-depth understanding of color grading, how to adjust for different times of day and lighting situations, different equipment you can use to get a better picture, how to adjust your camera and use different techniques, color theory, color palettes, color wheels, you know complementary colors all that and more I'm sure I've already mentioned my class but we will be going through a full in-depth analysis on how to get you the best color grading possible every single time thanks for watching tune in next week where we learn how to fly